Okay, it's a fan commentary of Disney versus non-Disney villains, part two, round twelve, part one. So let's continue. Well, actually, let's begin. So we start off with the prologue. We see uh, General Cal. Or hold on. Yeah, you get where this is going. Yeah, she's pressuring General Cal to find the prophecy child before, you know, time runs out. <clears throat> then we see the the Sanderson sisters introduces Maxim Horvat to Cal, or Calabar Jr. Okay, the with this editing, I'm kind of concerned with Sarah. I know she's all want to play with men, and look how she's doing. Like, well, I am glad Whitford stopped her. Let me play with him. No, you freak. I'm glad with Winifred that he stop her there. Like, Sit down, you know, he is way too young for you, you know that? I'm glad she stopped her like that. I hope that she can, you know, talk to her about this stuff. I mean, just the way that that footage kind of shows it. So, uh, yeah, he tells them about, you know, his mistress death, and it turns out they both have a common enemy. Which is Queen Beth Morda. Hmm. And then we see in the live, uh, still in this realm, which is of course the live action realm. We're still in the live action realm. Emmanuel Thorpe. Hello, hello, hello. Although I do like in the description that Count Olaf is just tired of working with or just being around with Count, you know, Dr. Claw and Corella. So he decides to switch alliance with Zorg. And then he introduces him to Pinhead. He's like, Intrigue. I'm here for business, not pleasure. Well, then again, you have a sick twist of pleasure. Okay, now for the first fight, which is back in the hand drawn realm. So we got Shendu versus the pack. So we see that Shendu is, you know, summoning back his uh, demonic temples, you know, his palace. It is interesting seeing Balmon and his gang team up with Shendu, even though in Jackie Chan, he ne they didn't go along with it because uh, Shendu did point out that Jackie Chan was the one who brought him the last talisman to him by, you know, accident. And that's not going to give them a reward, but in here... We do see that Valmont and the gang get rewarded by after freeing Shendu. Guess that the demon sorcerers are just the people of their word, or just demons for their words. You know, good bargain. Then, of course, the pack shows up. Because they were just uh, summoned by, you know, sent by David Xanatos to stop them. You come from a proper spirit. Uh, poor Toru. I know I said that in a non-Disney Villains Tournament Round 1 fan commentary. Like, poor Toru. I mean, you gotta admit, you gotta feel sorry for him. Dang! Wait, was that a tower? Eh. I mean, you can... Yeah, I... Just feel sorry for Toru being in there. It's like, he shouldn't be part of this. Huh? Yeah, that's very threatening when he says that. I'm, I am surprised that Jackal is not threatened by this. And if I were to see Shen do that way and he says those things like, I am... The Keeper of Talismans, I am the Witch the Apocalypse Speak, and I am for once and for all your executioner. I would be so threatened by that. I mean, that dude is a freaking demon sorcerer. What would you expect? What, do you expect them to give a flower? No, you're being getting killed. I mean, yeah, these demon sorcerers are a perfect example that not every demon has a rainbow. Like, not every... 
like, okay, let me try this again. It kind of gives an example that... Not inside of every demon is a wing bow. That's a perfect example. That's a, just a reference to Haspen Hotel. I, Yeesh. Bleep. Well, if I shouldn't do wins. Uh-huh. Okay, now for the next fight is, uh, the Sorcerer Society versus Mojo, Jojo, and his ape army. So we see that Vlad believes that Shen Yu's armies are weakened ever since the attack on Peru. So he suggests Queen La to send Mojo Jojo to send his ape armies to attack, uh, you know, to attack China. Even though I'm not big on the Powerpuff Girls, I I will admit it is a classic, and I'm not gonna lie, I am getting this part of my DVD collections. Although I actually, I will admit, even though I'm not big on the Powerpuff Girls, I will admit the movie is actually pretty, pretty good. Not great, but good. And now is the Attack of the Apes. Actually, I mean, now is be like the real life Planet of the Apes sort of thing with superpowers. Oh, now we got the exploding monkeys. It's kind of weird how so many ape armies just dress up or cosplay as Mojo Jojo. Oh, the monkey throwing page. Oh, that's silly. Even though that's evident, even though. It's just blur, even though in the movie it was painted. But I don't think you can tell by that with the color filter that it's covered. It's like Mojo had just killed him, and now there's blood all over that monkey. Yeesh! Okay, even though our attack like throwing paint, oh, that's silly. Oh, they're going to spit. Oh, that's silly. But giant mechanic robots throwing bombs everywhere. Now that's more intimidating. Uh, orangutan on a tank. I mean, come on, Isma is not a sorceress, she's a scientist. Which, meh. Nah. Zamp! Oh, now we got exploding monkeys. Oh, the dead monkeys everywhere. Because somebody's gonna have to pile up all the dead monkeys. Or dead apes, that is. The Sorcerer Society wins. The next fight is Katar Wall versus Darn Cornage. Okay, now that's an interesting. So, how'd that go again? Uh, oh yeah, Katar Wall and Tula locate a treasure trove in a on a seemingly abandoned island, hoping it might get enough riches to build their own criminal empire. But I can tell by the footage what I saw. I thought, wait, what the heck? And then I realized. A horrible, really bad, awful fact that they made a Fievel Ghost West TV show. Not an entire TV show based on an American tale, but just Fievel Ghost West. What? What? Why? Why? Just why? I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I've seen bits and pieces of the full episodes of each. And I just stopped watching afterwards only a few episodes. And I just thought, oh my god, that was horrible. And I always thought Disney... Often at times make some bad TV shows based on movies. But I wouldn't always assume, after seeing this, and then saw All oh, Dogs Go to Heaven TV show, that just proves to me that the non-Disney TV shows based on the non-Disney movies are even bad, or just way more terrible. I don't know what these people are thinking, but I am happy to see Caterwall in there, even though I just don't like that footage from the TV show. Oh 
hold on. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I just thought I want to hear this. I do like Don Connor. He is an interesting character. Okay, I'm glad for the movie footage of Catterwall. Be the sad thing is, be that be it. Cause the cave to be coming to collapse. And here's something that really bothers me: is that look how they're doing. Look how their expressions are. They just look up and go, yeah, 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 yeah. Like they, like they're, they're almost eyes will almost pop out, and, and then they're going like, yee, 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 yee. and then zoom. It's like, no, no, you're not supposed to do that. You're not Looney Tunes. You're Don Bluth villains. So some dignity. Okay, most Don Bluth villains have dignity. Every Don Bluth villain have dignity. Jenner from The Secret of Nim, Warranty Rat, and Cut a Wall ha from An American Tale have dignity. Sharp Tooth from The Land Before Time has dignity. Rasputin from Anastasia has dignity. Just every Don Bluth villain you could think of, they all have dignity just as much as the Disney villains. Have dignity. But when we see Catawall and Chola in a, an American Tale Five Ghost Ghostwise TV cartoon show, you see them how they react in a very cartoony way. It's just stupid. I don't know what it was Universal Studios thinking. Hold on. They got out, they, they're still running in the air, and they stopped, looked down, they got scared, and in a wild coyote way. <sighs> this is my least favorite one. Mostly for the TV footage of it. Glad to see Donna Carnage in here, and I'm glad to see Kyle Wall in here, but I flipping hate it. I flipping hate it when people make a good movie and turn it into a very crappy TV show. Okay, so the next one is uh, Negaduck vs. Jack Spicer. Okay, so Negaduck decides to spread his own, you know, chaos. Or whatever. I'm still trying to calm down after this. I'm not in a salty way, but a just kind of angry way. Then he runs into Jack Spicer. Okay, at least this one does calm me down. And boom! Bombs away! Yeah, even though I'm... Darkwing Doug is a... It's a good show, in my opinion. Next, makes me see how, how intense Nega Doug is. And Jack Spicer, I still kind of see him as, like, the non-Disney doofenshmirtz, but as a, you know, a teenager. You know, a punk wannabe teenager. Trying to be all edgy and stuff. Hmm? And he's got a giant bomb. Really does show how crazy he is. Oh, never mind. He just cut that rope. And Negaduck is without his clothes. I mean, I mean, he's pantsless. What else can you say? Then he meets the Phantom Blot. I was wondering when he was going to show up. So I guess Jack Spicer wins. And I think I'm going to stop right here. So see you guys in the next part of the video.